Hi, today we're going to look at Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot. Um, in particular, we're going to focus on context and we're going to answer an essay question about the setting that Beckett uses. So our question will be, discuss Beckett's use of setting in Waiting for Godot. You must make reference to context in your answer. So really, there are just two key quotes that we're going to use to focus our discussion today. One is the stage direction at the start of Act One, a country road, a tree, evening. And the next is very similar. It's at the start of Act Two, next day, same time, same place. We're going to look at these stage directions and look at the context that surround them. We're going to explore how the setting is very minimal how it's a very static setting. Um, we're going to look at the significance of the road, the tree, and the time of day. So let's start off with looking at how these stage directions are very minimalistic. Right from the start, we realise that this set is quite barren. This was non-conventional, but would have been in keeping with mid-century theatre, that's mid-20th century theatre, um, a time when things were changing, um, and Beckett was writing um, in unconventional ways um, to explore and perhaps shock sometimes ourselves, the audience, into thinking about things in a different way and exploring the human condition. Um, we know that um, retrospectively um, he is described as an absurdist playwright um, and if you want to explore this further you can look at Martin Eslin's article uh, Martin Eslin being the person who um, coined that term absurdist. I think it's also very significant here, this minimalist landscape, that we are only in the early 50s, the early post-war period, and that much of the European landscape would have been quite barren, quite minimalist. Um, buildings um, had been removed uh, by bombing. They were broken down, fallen down. And also that perhaps there were... Um, People who had been displaced, um, certainly um, Beckett himself would have had experience of this working in the French resistance. Shortly after the war, there would have been people um, displaced, wandering around um, refugees by the side of the road. Um, so all of this contributes to his um, idea about setting these two characters, Vladimir and Estragon, in a minimalist um, setting. Um, this setting, you might notice as well, is also very static. Um, this remains faithful to um, Aristotle's ideas of the unities in drama, um, where he suggests that action should um, take place all in one place. Now, even though Beckett is a very unconventional playwright, um, he does conform to this basic tenet that we know about from Aristotle's era. In fact, the staticness of the play, the fact that it all takes place in one spot, could help enhance our understanding of um, these people on stage performing for us. Everybody else, Pozzo, the boy, come in and out. And even Estragon disappears and comes back to Vladimir, who remains static in one place. And I think that as performance and theatre um, is a great part of this play, we should um, view this static setting with the tree um, by the size of the road as a, a play set um, that um, a play within a play if you like Vladimir and Estragon are characters in their own play people come and watch them and depart people come and um, act with them and then depart um, I also think the static nature of the play contributes um, to this notion of nothing happening. Um, and as we know, there is a very um, famous quote that this is a play where nothing happens twice. Um, and this um, idea about lack of movement, lack of change in set, apart from the tree briefly um, changing its appearance by sprouting some leaves, um, is very important in um, Beckett's um, presentation of these characters, that they are not progressing. They have the opportunity to progress with the road, but they don't do it. So next, I'd like to move on to the road. These characters are stuck here by the road. Um, they note that the road is free to all. Um, and the road is a very familiar setting 
um, for all of us. It is a place where business takes place. Um, it is a public space. Um, and symbolically, in terms of context, um, it is a place where journeys um, can occur, where one moves and progresses and matures. Again, this relates back to my last point about this being a static play. Um, the two characters here have an opportunity to progress, mature, develop, but we perhaps feel that they do not. Um, this um, idea of the road as a place of trial, of journey, of progression um, is one that crops up in many pieces of literature. Um, you could look, for example, at Pilgrim's Progress, um, John Bunyan's um, story, um, which illustrates a, um, a trial um, of his main character um, who has to undertake a journey on the road. Um, I also think that it might have a particular um, importance in an Irish setting. Um, roads in Ireland were um, something which um, people during the famine were asked to build. Um, they were given a kind of fake employment. Famine roads were built so men could have work and they would build a road and they would be paid. So it was a kind of um, social service job, if you like, a service to the community which they were paid for. But often the road was built and never used or never led anywhere. Um, so perhaps there is a kind of hopelessness um, of this road that the two characters never use. Um, they are stood by it, um, they are able to look along it, but they never use the road. And I think that might be a very important contextual point um, from an Irish point of view. Um, going back to our um, stage direction, we next encounter the tree. A tree. Um, it's not really a very healthy tree. It looks most for the most of Act One as if it is dead. Um, it sprouts. It has sprouted a couple of leaves by um, the time we reach the next act, um, and the presence of the tree enables Beckett to explore the notion of crucifixion um, and indeed of suicide when um, these two characters are contemplating hanging themselves. Um, with the hanging, um, it doesn't ever appear to be a serious proposition. Um, they don't manage to organise it um, and they end up crudely joking about it, um, uh, talking about the sexual pleasure they might get from the hanging. Um, so in one way, the tree is there and it brings in quite a lot of comedy. But in another way, in a darker way, it brings in the notion of crucifixion. This is introduced by the debate um, about the um, account in the Bible, in the Gospels, about the two thieves. Um, and the, some sort of theme of redemption perhaps comes from that, the redeemed and the unredeemed, the thief that was saved um, and the thief that was not saved. Um, so there's all sorts of ideas working around the tree. The tree um, is often used in religious circumstances to describe the cross. So tree and cross here really are synonymous. Um, we also might think of the tree of knowledge in um, Adam and Eve and the story of Adam and Eve and going back to another biblical text looking at Genesis. Um, and you might look at the, um, the tree of knowledge, these two creatures, perhaps Adam and Eve, there may well be a reading that can be developed around this. Um, the tree also has an important place in terms of the only um, significant marker of change in the play. With the leaves sprouting at the beginning of Act 2, it demonstrates the passing of time. Um, when we go into Act 2, um, the characters themselves are uncertain about where they were yesterday and who came yesterday. Everything becomes a little bit more uncertain. But as an audience, we can focus on the tree and see that the tree has moved on. The last aspect of the setting that I'd like to talk about is the evening. Um, Beckett makes it very clear that this play is happening in the evening. Um, I think we need to think about that in respect of the time of life of these characters. They are approaching the evening of their life. Um, they are elderly. Um, and Pozzo, in his um, brief monologue, refers to this, um, that night is coming. Um, he talks about, behind this veil of gentleness and peace, night is charging. He looks um, 
around and looking at the sky and the moon and how beautiful the evening is. But then he reminds us that there is something sinister there, something aggressive, something that's charging and encroaching on the beauty and the peace. Um, and that enables him to bring um, the idea um, that he expresses quite vitriolically at the end of that monologue. That's how it is on this bitch of an earth. So it, there is a contrast between the gentleness of old age and evening and then the coming on of death that comes charging and comes powerfully and cannot be resisted. And I think this play is very much about um, old age and um, how we um, are all in a position um, of perhaps enjoying evening time and death will come charging for every one of us. So I hope that this has gone some way to solving the problem of the Beckett play and that you've got some valuable context from that. Mm -hmm.